my name is Amy Cruz. I am the founder and CEO of Moms on Maternity. I am mom to two amazing young boys. Hey, good morning. It's Amy. Okay, so for mom life this week, I am, let's talk bedtime. So bedtime around here is usually between 8 and 9, really, in that window, depending on the day. And we go in um, the kids' room. They're they're two beds. They share a room. And we will generally sometimes have, like, our projector on that shows, like, planets and the stars and different moons. Um, Maybe we'll do glow sticks. There's a nightlight sometimes on... But um, we'll do questions, so like acad- like kind of learning questions, or we'll do like, what do you like better type questions, or just, um, you know, what's your favorite questions. So we do questions, do a little bit of talking, get goofy sometimes, we'll sing songs or play stand-up comedian random games. <laughs> um, but that time is fun. It's challenging at times, but it's actually so fun too. Um, some really great memories are made at that eight to nine hour. The kids often, mom, can I have this extra drink, you know, a glass of milk or can I have some water before bed? So trips to the kitchen, back to the room. Um, I live with my youngest for a little bit, tuck them both in. And so that's bedtime here. <laughs> Okay, hi. So for dating and relationships today, let's talk about some magic words and magic moments that really play into most of my relationships or probably most of all of our relationships. So power words. Thank you. Stop telling someone thank you. A real genuine thank you. Goes a long way. Can't be overused. Um, When you feel that you need to thank someone, thank them. And also thank yourself. And be grateful for everything. I mean, every day, it really is amazing just to, like, sit there and reflect on everything you have in your life that you should be thankful for. Okay, so the next word is, uh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. So being able to say I'm sorry, being able to say I made a mistake is incredibly powerful. Um, And being able to forgive someone is incredibly powerful. And um, I think that these are words that we probably don't say enough. And then finally, I love you. So telling someone you love them, uh, you know, especially your significant other, your children, um, you know, your, your, your really close friends, you know, hearing those words, it, it does touch your heart and it does make change happen. And they say that um, how do you know, I think it's from Winnie the Pooh. It's, uh, how do you spell love? And I think Piglet or Pooh says, you don't spell love, you feel it. So though you can generally feel when someone loves you, it's nice to hear it too. Some people's love language is, is words of affirmation. Um, so at Deloitte, where I worked for a long time, we had this amazing workshop and methodology, and it was called The Moments That Matter. And the concept was, you know, we don't remember the days, we remember moments. And so when you look back on your life, you know, your memories are really a series of moments that you've had with people or experiences that kind of stick with you. Um, And so what, you know, triggers these like amazing moments? And I think for me, it's been eye contact when you just have that moment of like focusing on someone and, and really hearing them and really seeing them. And then first impressions, like, do you notice, like, a lot of the people that have been, like, pretty significant in your life, you remember, like, the first time you met them or some random coincidental encounter with them. Seems kind of random, but it it does trigger my moments that matter. Um, And then just those smiles exchanged, especially with my kids, those are the moments that have a special place in my heart. And so how do you make a moment matter, you know, other ways, um, just kind of quoting some of the Deloitte methodology in business, you know, bring a point of view, um, just show up, be present, 
say what, you know, say what no one else will, uh, walk in their shoes, have empathy. So check out uh, Deloitte's Moments That Matter. All right, thanks. <laughs>11 years ago before your first of three kids was born. Oh gosh, 11. Yeah, you're right. Um, That seems like a long time ago and not so far either. Um, So yeah, I was full-time working at Microsoft and HR on a trajectory where I was pretty certain that that's what I wanted to be doing my whole life. (laughs) And um, yeah, quickly had three kids within three years. So I, there was a period of time where I actually could say that I had three kids, three and under. Wow. but after my second, it just became kind of a logistical thing and decided to leave full-time employment and work part-time, which was a blessing because I had tons of flexibility and could be there for the things that I wanted to do with my kids and also be there for kind of the career you know, aspect that I wanted to keep as part of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it hasn't been until the last, I don't know, two or three years that I've kind of expanded kind of that more of that passion and interest and started doing stuff on my own. So starting a business, becoming an entrepreneur and trying to figure out life as a mom doing all that. Amazing. So I know your latest um, project is this mom journal that is incredible, but tell us kind of on your entrepreneur route, what you started two or three years ago. Yeah. So I would say like being a mom, right. There's um, so many transitions that you go through. There's so many emotions, mentally, physically, you know, tons of stuff that, that happens and having, I have a master's in therapy. So I've always taken a look at kind of my life and these transitions from a therapeutic aspect too. And, um, you know, going through these different stages in my life, I realized that I was missing out on pieces of myself, like pieces of myself that, I once loved and and experienced and did and enjoyed before kids that I kind of slowly through time stopped doing. And the last several years I realized, man, I really miss that. I miss that part of me, you know, that made me feel joy and other aspects outside of being a mom. And uh, so that's kind of how I came to the point of creating the journal and really figuring out like how I can take care of myself from all these different aspects and trying to support women in that same capacity, right? It's like helping them figure out how they can be capable and confident, fulfilled in all aspects of their life. And one way I do that is through this journal. And so how, so how does the journal work? Um, you mean, how did I create it or what, I mean, what, what's the, yeah, intention, like, how does the journal help you figure out how to feel, feel yeah. more fulfilled? Yes. Um, so I'll, I, I have it right here. I actually use it myself. Hold it up. Hold it up yes. Right. Hold it up. Here we go. Staying, yes. staying, staying true higher. to you in okay. motherhood. Okay. Um, so basically what it is, it is a 40 week aligned to pregnancy, but 40 weeks of whole self topics. So everything from nutrition to your sleep, to work and career, to boundaries, to families, like all these different aspects of yourself that make you, you, and it forces you to reflect on them through writing prompts. It helps you goal set on areas that you want to improve in. And then it also gives you space for gratitude, which I think is one of the most powerful things that any individual really can do. So it, it helps kind of give you a framework for thinking about and feeling about and working through some of these things that, that make you, you as a mom. Yeah, as I actually a heard woman. a quote or a quote last night that was like, deep down inside, you already know what you want and who you yes, are. Yes. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's beautiful. I want to I mean, use that. Yeah. <laughs> So do you think that journal would help you kind of figure out what's really hidden deep down inside? Yes. I mean, I, I've heard that too, right? I've heard that like our true self kind of comes out at like age 10 or 11. And then we're constantly like, whether it's just like experiences or society or whatever is kind of changing that. But if you can kind of go back to that self of when you're a 10 or 11 year old, like you really get a sense for who you really are. Um, cool. You know, and then you go through transitions in life that change you. And honestly, motherhood is one of those big ones that in many amazing ways, it changes you. And in many hard ways, it changes you too. And so kind of figuring out what are the things that you want to bring from yourself prior to motherhood? And what are the things that you want to continue to adapt and evolve as a mother makes you that whole person. 
Well, and I like one of the things you've said before is, you know, if, if you want to, you know, be home, that's great. If you want to be an entrepreneur, that's great. If you want to be working outside the home and more of a traditional yes. corporate role, you know, that's great. Um, do you, do, do you think that like deep down inside, we all know like which one of those we actually want, or is it sometimes where you're conflicted? Oh boy. I mean, I think there's so many factors, right. That contributed, um, you know, cause you have financial components, just as using an example that may prevent, um, or encourage, right. You to kind of fill that path that you want to take. But I think going back to your statement, like I, I believe that all moms, regardless of what they decide to do after having a kid, we're all working moms. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's kind of the stance that I first come with and then trying to figure out what that quote unquote work looks like, whether it's in the home full time with your kids, whether it's volunteering at schools, whether it's, you know, working within a corporation, you know, that's where I think some of this work about reflecting on your whole self will help you be fulfilled in whatever role that you take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. For more, please visit www.mamdomaternity.com.